what is the Pirate Party and why is it so important at the moment? Uh, okay, so the Pirate Party is um, an answer to the fact that uh, our societies are changing and that's why it's becoming a global movement so quickly is because there is a complete vacuum uh, in uh, the sort of political spectrum and the uh, Pirate Party is the only party that's addressing the online reality that almost everybody is living in. Uh, Pirate Party is still in a huge development uh, and it is, that's the beauty of it, is that you can actually impact how it's going to develop because it's a global movement, uh, just like the Greens used to be like 50 years ago or something like that. So it's a really unique time for people to get involved because they can actually help shape this uh, uh, concept of a new way of thinking of politics. Uh, Pirate Party is, it's different, you said earlier yesterday, um, that it's not left or right. I mean, the existing par parties, parliament, uh, political parties, are all about left and right, you know, what, what we used to know, how it worked, and we're just trying to continue that and improve it bit by bit. But a lot of the, the issues that we're coming up today are, um, are not answered by the current uh, political um, parties, I guess, uh, and the legal systems, and we, should, we, we want to start addressing them. I mean, for example, uh, pirating movies, how do, how do you deal with that? And nobody is actually dealing with that in the, in the, existing, uh, in the existing structures. And the part party is com coming in and saying, okay, it's, uh, we need to start addressing those, uh, those issues. We need to understand how to react to that. We need to, to, to have a discussion, an open discussion. Because right now, every time you, open, you start talking about uh, pirating software or, uh, or intellectual property, uh, you're being shut down because it, nobody talks about it. It's not okay, just not okay to pirate, and that's it. That's the, that's the, end, of, uh, oh, that's the end of it. And the Pirate Party comes in and says, yeah, we have a lot of, th a lot of things to talk about uh, and we should start talking about this stuff. And one thing I've noticed also, with, uh, because I, I move around the artistic circles a lot since that's my background, uh, uh, and most of the artists that are sort of struggling artists or you know, not the super mega stars, uh, they are very concerned about the copyright laws because they feel that it actually uh, stops the people that might enjoy their art from being able to access it without, uh, you know, either risking prison terms uh, or being labeled as thieves if they share. You mentioned also that you're a mother. I would like to know if your being a mother plays any uh, plays any part in your activism. I think that uh, when you um, have a child, you change. Uh, which is obvious, you have to start to care on a daily basis for somebody else uh, and you have to shape and change your life for that person and uh, you are the guardian and the mentor of an, a new person uh, an incredible privilege uh, and uh, so I think it gave me a deeper understanding about the importance of thinking for the next seven generations instead of just thinking about the next four years or two years to try to, to look um, uh, up the world and life uh, from a different vantage point um, and uh, because but I do care for all children I want all the children of the world to have uh, a real future uh, so yeah it kind of makes one realize when you're uh, when you're growing a child inside of you the interconnectedness, not just of yourself and of your child, but of yourself and future children and of yourself and children all over the world. And it kind of, the boundaries that um, various forms of propaganda will blinker and blind you with, um, I think it, it's, it's a beautiful thing when they drop away. I never forget the moment where, um, uh, with my older son, when um, I, I sort of felt his spirit enter my spirit, like, you know, when I felt that there was like a real person uh, inside me, it was such an incredible moment. Uh, and, uh, but one of the great things about having kids is that you can actually influence them to be, um, yeah, exactly. And I mean, my mother gave me this gift uh, and I have carried this gift on to my children. And uh, I mean, for example, my younger son is the—he's 11, uh, and uh, he 
uh, started to research Monsanto. And I, I don't think anybody in Iceland has much uh, understanding of how Monsanto works as him. So he's like trying to lobby for the teachers in his school to watch, uh, you know, food ink and stuff like that. Uh, and he loves Anonymous because they're fighting against Monsanto. <laughs> uh, so you can, and, and most of this is his own research because I've taught him to do research and do other stuff in computers than just uh, games. Of course, gaming is not bad. It teaches you, um, you know, skills. yeah, certain skills that are very useful. Uh, but it also teaches, I mean, he's really good in English, uh, even if uh, Icelandic is our native language, because he needs to understand words so that he can advance whatever he's doing online. So uh, we can have tremendous impact. For example, I, I've, um, I have never bought Coke uh, because I know how Coca-Cola Corporation works. Uh, and so I explained to him originally the uh, uh, physical uh, impact of Coca-Cola on your body. Like it would be the same as if it would give him a cup of coffee with 10 sugars. And I said, do you want me to give you that? Or, you know, because Coke is just the same. And then he would go and like see uh, parents giving like their children Coke and he would be completely shocked. You know, how can you do this to your child? <laughs> So, I mean, it's like, we can, we can, uh, and then it gets other people to think, so. Uh, what are your feelings on, um, on academic institutions and academic in education? Well, uh, I think it can be useful, but it is not the only uh, way to learn. I mean, I'm self-educated. I dropped out of school because it was so boring. Uh, <laughs> so I just decided I can learn anything I want to. You know, mm. there's nothing I can't do uh, if I just uh, put my mind to it and I apply that uh, uh, sort of enthusiasm. And uh, of course, you have to be very. Um, um, you have to have a certain discipline to be able to do this. And we need to nurture that in people that they can have this discipline without being made into uh, iron cast uh, wall spades, you know, like in the film The Wall, uh, where, where we just cast people into that they're all the same, should all behave the same. And can you see what the, uh, what's happening in our schools? Uh, because children don't fit into this model, they're just being drugged so much with, uh, uh, you know, Ritalin and all these different drugs. Yes. yes. And we have to stop this trend people should be diverse it should be you know it's good that people are not just uh, willing to sit uh, on the butt all six day, hours a day uh, and it's, just it's listen abnormal to yeah, it's that's abnormal that's why uh, there are so many children that can't do it because it's absolutely abnormal uh, but academia can be good if people understand that it's not uh, religion yeah. Yeah. <coughs> the uh, the terrifying activities of uh, the IDF in the Gaza Strip. How much of a role does religious f kind of fundamentalism play there? A lot of people talk about Zionism and things like that. I know you live out in Israel. Is it religious fundamentalism that's that's driving these people crazy in a kind of a rejection of science? Or? Um, I don't think so. I mean, yeah, eventually it comes down to that. Uh, you you use religion as a tool to spread your propaganda. You're yeah. saying that Jewish are bad people, you, they should be destroyed. Or on the other side, you're saying the Arabs are bad people, they want to destroy you. Uh, but eventually, I don't think it's just that. I mean, people, um, at the end of the, of the day, they don't care about that. As long as they have uh, food on their plate, as long as they have uh, shelter, uh, from the rain, uh, they don't care about that. Uh, once you give them those things, they, they won't care about killing other people. Uh, the reason that you do have uh, uh, religious fundamentalists on both sides is because they're lacking of these basic uh, needs, uh, especially in the in the Gaza Strip, and um, uh, they don't have enough food, they don't have enough uh, uh, electricity to warm them through the cold nights. Um, there is some religi religious fundamentalism into that, but I don't believe that's you know that's most of it. I, I think it's a small subject that is used to entice people into bringing more uh, uh, supporters into that. But eventually, I think it's a it's a financial reason that people are um, being uh, drawn into that. I mean, whenever uh, whenever you hear about a um, a shahid that goes and explodes in the streets of Tel Aviv, uh, you look into that and you you, you see that. Uh, his family is uh, barely surviving, the, the, the barely uh, capable of feeding their youngs, and 
uh, if he goes and explodes in, in the streets of Tel Aviv, uh, his family is being promised uh, $5,000 to survive the next year or so. And it's not, uh, usually it's not, you know, the, the fundamentalist or uh, ideological uh, reasons that why people go out and do this horrendous uh, uh, things outside out there. When uh, a lot of people speculate that the, the global elite, the oligarchy, if you like, uh, John Perkins has coined the term corporatocracy, have a depopulation agenda where, you know, perhaps the Bilderberg Group and other organizations of people scheme to murder en masse. Uh, do you think that's the case, or is it more or less complex than that? Um, I don't know really to tell you. I'm not, I'm not that well versed in yeah. um, I think it's eventually there are some people that have interests that are not co-signing with our interests. Uh, they're doing it for financial profit in order to control certain uh, certain population to do uh, their bidding. Uh, one way or another, I don't know how deep it goes. I'm not yeah, going yeah. to. I'm not going to go into. Uh, in, in but say, for instance, like eugenics. Yeah. Uh, people often implicate a guy like Bill Gates and look at the history of his family and their activities and Planned Parenthood and things like that, and it starts to a pattern starts to emerge of murderous intent in the in the in some of the richest and some of the more. Uh, psychologically unsound global elite. Mm. Uh, yeah, I know what you're talking about. Uh, I haven't researched that myself. I have some of it, some ideas on that, but I, I'm not too too versed in, the, in those subjects okay. to actually have coherent but I, answer. But I think it's uh, important uh, if you look at the bigger picture. And I have read many of Perkins' books, uh, and uh, I met him, uh, and um, I think that perhaps his strongest message. Uh, is that, uh, and I highly recommend uh, people that have read The Economic Hate Man to read a book that is uh, much less famous called Shape Shifting mm. or Shape Shifters. Uh, uh, and it is really about um, how we need to shape shift into the system to understand how it works uh, so that we can play the system by its game. So let's say you are aware of uh, that Coca Cola is a completely unethical company behaving like a sociopath when it comes to certain countries that can't defend themselves against these massive corporations. Uh, there is a reason why, you know, uh, 20 years ago, Coca-Cola used to, used to be called uh, workers' blood because there were so many people killed in Colombia that were union leaders uh, that were fighting for workers' rights down there that were killed by uh, Coca-Cola representatives. Anyway, so um, if we... And he said, okay, why don't you buy a share in the Coca-Cola company and then you are entitled, you don't have to buy a big share, you're entitled to go to shareholder meeting and you can do dissidents in there, you can draw attention to all the wrongdoings they're doing. So you go in there and it makes them so uneasy that you're there. Because if you go by their rules, uh, but then you uh, turn it against them, uh, it changes the dynamics. While we're always on the outside, we will always be outsiders. We will never understand the grander picture. Um, and while you know, I do believe I know that the Bilderberg group exists, uh, and uh, and there is no doubt about that. There is uh, some sort of uh, conspiracy in controlling the sort of last remaining wealth of this world, uh, and there are so many people enslaved as debt slavers, um, and. You know, I don't know the exact plot, if it is depopulation or whatever, I don't have anything to verify it. But what worries me is uh, uh, that there are people that don't acknowledge that there's global warming. I don't care if it's man-made or not, there is global warming, you know, without a doubt. There are some countries that uh, are going underwater, uh, like Bangladesh. Uh, People, children can't go to school there more than half of the year because their schools are completely flooded. Not just a little bit, but flooded like this. Yeah. Monsanto is an uh, particularly evil company because uh, they have put patents on seeds, not only in the United States, but in India and various other countries. Uh, and as we're reaching into more and more recession and prices of foods are going to get up and up, uh, and we have more and more riots and instability in countries that didn't used to have instability, the reign of those that own the psychopathic uh, large corporations is going to get much stronger. So we need to start to address these things uh, 
and there should be much more resistance against Monsanto because the most powerful corporation in the world is going to be the corporation that controls the world's food basket. Um, I just want to say something about Monsanto. A lot of people attack Monsanto specifically. Uh, while I agree that they're psychopathic and they shouldn't exist, uh, I don't think that uh, it's Monsanto or Coca-Cola or McDonald's that uh, should take the blame. They're just playing the game as the rules dictate to them. And they're doing everything they can to uh, be a better player in that game. Uh, I think the, the rules, the, the, the playing field is uneven. It's, uh, it's designed uh, over generations to be in favor of those who already have uh, already have something. Um, the, the, the playing field is not even as as uh, we're being taught in school that everybody can make it out there. You just hard work and you know you're gonna be out there. Uh, for example, the United States, uh, most of the the uh, twenty somethings in the United States have some kind of college degree, but uh, a lot of them are unemployed. Uh, they play by the rules, and yet they're being screwed by the rules by the system. Um, and the people that are uh, buying and selling stuff using the copyright system, the, the patent protection, they're just using the system for on their benefit. And I don't think they have other choices. I mean, it's it's much deeper than the, the the fact that we need to kill Monsanto. Killing Monsanto won't help us. The system is still there to create other. Monsanto's like that. I think we well, need to completely change the system to eliminate the, the patents, the copywriting. No, not completely eliminating, but at least adapting them to the, to this, these new ideas of internet and sharing on the internet and sharing ideas and um, allowing us to uh, enjoy content without redistributing it, uh, but not uh, making a profit from it. Um, I think it's we need to change this. We, the system would need to adapt to that. And right now, it's just uh, we're in the uh, in the twilight zone between the two systems. You know, the old one and the new one that's coming in, uh, like Bitcoin, for example. They're just uh, right now they're colliding, and we're seeing this um, uh, outrageous uh, you know, stuff happening in the world because of that. Yeah. But I, you know, to a degree, uh, I disagree because uh, you know I agree that we need to change the system. It's uh, fundamental. But we cannot possibly say that it is playing by the rules to be responsible for the death of lots of people. I mean, that, that there are no rules that say that that is right. Uh, yeah, but the, the uh, problem is there are no rules that say that is wrong. I mean, right, no, the but, rules are no, said that... Thing, no, no, no. Rules are, and this is so fundamental that we understand this, that rules, even if we write all these laws, we're never going to prevent uh, a perverse, psychopathic behavior. Okay? Mm -hmm, right. doesn't matter what perfect laws we have. Everybody agrees it's wrong to kill somebody in order to profit. Right? right? Everybody agrees. Yeah, so on that's the, surface, the rule. Yeah, but, but no, 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 that's the rule. Because yeah, if everybody agrees on something, there's a social agreement that this is wrong behavior. Uh, and the only reason you can't stop it is because these people control the lawmaking process. Then obviously, uh, we need to create a system that enables us to stop this sort of behavior. And there was actually a really good film called The Corporation. That, and the reason why I'm saying like uh, sociopathic uh, or psychopathic uh, companies is that the way the corporations are built, uh, that um, the, the for-profit elements in it uh, enables them or creates these uh, sociopathic uh, monsters. Uh, and uh, if, you, if you profile it uh, as a, uh, there was a, have you seen the film, The Corporation? Uh, I think so, I don't remember Can exactly. It's very good, so, yeah. uh, and, and it sort of analyzes how corporations are built up uh, as a personality. If they were, because they have all the rights of a person, right. but none of the responsibilities. And so they abused, uh, the American corporations blew, abused uh, an opportunity when the slaves were given their freedom to get uh, accepted as personal entities. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's astonishing that this hasn't been changed uh, all this time. So maybe the task of the future is to look into all these different laws that are enabling this sort of behavior. Uh, and there is this also this attitude of the ruling elite that people aren't people. They are, you know, they have separated, yeah, they are just uh, separated themselves so much from the human uh, compassion that they don't see uh, other people as people. Yeah. Uh, and so we have to humanize our planet again. Uh, and. Um, so, you know, of course it's not gonna, like, stop, uh, you know, 
companies like Monsanto, but just targeting Monsanto, but obviously Monsanto has the largest power uh, and they've been at it for a long time. Let's not forget how they were created. They were the people that created Agent Orange. And now this is the people that are engineering our food. It's terrifying. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Well, getting to watch uh, you two <coughs> spa minds and with your sexy accents has been amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for talking with us. Pleasure.